Back in August and early September, marine research organization OSEARCH finally made good on their promise to head across the Atlantic Ocean to try and catch and tag a great white shark in this region of the world. They've been releasing short documentary style videos via their YouTube channel over the last month or so, showcasing the trials and tribulations of at sea expeditions. And today we're gonna have a look at their journey so far and figure out why after several weeks of trying, they didn't manage to locate a single great white shark. Oh yeah, spoiler alert, they didn't find any. Surprise, surprise. I'm pretty sure not all of the episodes have been released on their YouTube channel yet, at least as of the time of recording this video anyway, but we know now, based on their vessel tracker, that they've definitely headed home. Now, first off, I was actually fairly shocked that Osearch followed through with their promise with this expedition. It's a long old way to come, likely incredibly expensive and time consuming, with an extraordinary low chance of success. Certainty of death, small chance of success. What are we waiting for? But they did it anyway. When I first read through the science brief released from Osearch in early August, I was a little bit confused though. The expedition is called Save the Med, so you'd think they might actually be heading into the Mediterranean, right? Because they probably got the best chance of capturing and tagging a white shark within the Mediterranean basin itself. But the expedition's three main locations were Vigo in the northwest of Spain, the Bay of Biscay and Brittany in France, and then finally County Kerry on the southwest coast of Ireland. None of the these three locations are in the Mediterranean. They're all in the Northeast Atlantic or the English Channel. Now that's a pretty long way to come, probably the best part of 4,000 miles to not do the research in the actual ocean basin that the expedition is named after. I will admit though, there have been sporadic confirmed sightings of white sharks in some of these locations down the years, particularly off the coast of Spain and in the Bay of Biscay as well. But when I say sporadic, I mean sporadic. The last truly confirmed white shark sighting in this part of the world was in 2021 in Spain. We'll talk a little bit about that one later on though. And then the one before that was nearly 50 years ago and that was off La Rochelle, France in 1977. The rest of the sightings are pretty much all unconfirmed with minimal scientific evidence to back up the claims. I'm just not quite sure why they would come all this way and not start in an area where you've got a half decent chance of hooking a great white shark. Now there is a chance that they're gonna come back at some point in the future, so maybe they just started in these locations because they just happened to be closer. And maybe if they did come back again, they'd venture properly into the Mediterranean basin. But still, why not start there? One of the reasonings that I can see provided in the scientific brief that they released is that they say the sightings of white sharks in these areas are likely from white sharks that have left the Mediterranean and have gone to forage in the Northeast Atlantic. They've not referenced that claim anywhere in the brief and from what I can see, the only people saying that are Osearch themselves. I've not been able to find that referenced in the scientific literature, so I'm not quite sure where the claim has come from other than Osearch. But the reason why there's no scientific evidence on that is because those sightings in the Northeast Atlantic have been so, so scarce over the last 50 years. So no one's managed to catch one and perform DNA analysis on it to show you, yeah, this one's definitely from the Mediterranean basin, or yeah, this one's from the Western Atlantic population. We of course can't know for sure, it could easily be either one of them. At the beginning of their mini series on YouTube, they also gave some further explanation as to why they weren't heading actually into the Mediterranean itself. Chris Fisher, the founder of Osearch, explains that based on their own experience working with these animals in the West, Western Atlantic, they believe it's easier to find white sharks in their foraging areas. And I wouldn't disagree with that statement at all. The hotspots for white sharks around the world are almost all exclusively places where they feed. All of the white shark tourism operators in South Africa were around massive seal colonies in Cape Town and Gansby. You've got Guadalupe in Mexico and then the Eastern Atlantic coast as well. These are all big feeding hotspots for white sharks and that is where your chances of seeing them are of course gonna be greater. But where they've got the idea of apparent white shark here in the Northeast Atlantic are consistently feeding off the coasts of Spain, France, and Ireland, I'm not sure. There's just no hard evidence of that anywhere. There's no maimed carcasses of seals consistently washing up on beaches in the region. And if there were, that would be pretty big news and local scientists would have jumped on it straight away. But there isn't. So again, I'm not buying into the reasoning behind that. If the thought process from Osearch was, right, we're gonna go to the white shark foraging grounds, then you've gotta to go to the areas where the white sharks are being seen more consistently and follow the food in those areas. Maybe it's just me, but I'd have been following the tuna 
in the Mediterranean itself. These big fish are likely a really important dietary component for Mediterranean white sharks, and their migration and spawning in this ocean basin is fairly well documented. Multiple tuna species move into the med in spring and summer to reproduce and spawn, and the white sharks could potentially be pretty close by. In spring and summer, these are the known locations where bluefin tuna spawn. So you've got the Balearic Islands, like Mallorca, Ibiza and Menorca, and then you've got the South Tyrrhenian Sea, you've got Malta and the Sicilian Channel, and there's also the suggestion of a tuna spawning ground in the Eastern Mediterranean as well, over here in the Levantine Sea, close to Turkey. And I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to all of you that in these locations, there have been more regular sightings of white sharks within the last 10 years or so. At least more regular and consistent than the ones in the Northeast Atlantic. Now I know that some of you might be pointing out that these tuna are migrating in and out of the Mediterranean. And in the last 10 years, tuna sightings in the Northeast Atlantic around Britain and Ireland have been fairly consistent and even somewhat increasing. And yeah, that's true. Tuna are being seen off the coast of Ireland and the Southwest coast of England. But at the same time, there's been no real evidence of foraging white sharks on those specific tuna. My main sticking point here is that if you're gonna follow the food source and look for the foraging grounds, then you've also got to pair that with the more common and reliable sightings of the white sharks as well. The only real indication that I can see as to why they started off in Northwestern Spain is because of a white shark sighting there back in 2021. These videos show a large white shark, possibly about five meters long, swimming around near a port in Galicia on September 29th, 2021. And then again, a few weeks later, further up the coast in Riba de Sella on October the 15th. Authorities at the time described it as swimming slightly strangely as if it was disorientated. And there was the suggestion of it being a potentially sick or unwell individual, but it hung around in both of those locations for a few minutes before disappearing off into the deep. That's the only confirmed sighting of a white shark that Northwestern Spain has ever had. And I'd say that both of those sightings were the same individual. As to exactly what it was doing in Northwestern Spain that late into the year, I'm really not sure. There may have been some stray tuna that it was following, but it's tough to say for sure. So based on that 2021 sighting, I'd say that's probably why they've gone to that area to start off with, but it's a bit of a shot in the dark compared to some of the more common sightings that we're getting in the actual Mediterranean itself. So they chose to go with their plan and that's their decision. I just think though, from a science perspective, it wasn't the right call if they actually wanted to get some white sharks, but that's just my opinion. Now, so far in this video, I'd say I've gone in fairly hard on O-Search and this expedition. I'll be honest, I've got a few reservations about the organization itself and how they conduct their work. They're a bit cowboy and gung-ho in their approach to working with large shark species and have regularly been criticized for their removal of white sharks from the water while they're collecting data. O-Search founder Chris Fisher is no stranger to controversy as well. He's been criticized in the past for essentially getting in the way of longer term studies on white sharks in New England and potentially directly impacting the results of those studies. There's a sort of unwritten code in science and that's if someone is working on a specific topic in a certain area, don't blaze on in there and mess it all up. And Osearch absolutely have a history of doing that. So I myself don't really tend to look on them too fondly. Now, regardless of what you think about the organization itself and their members of staff, I'd be remiss in not pointing out some of the things that I thought were pretty good from this expedition. The first of which was their documentation and discussion of a shark entanglement while they were off the coast of Brittany. In episode three, a blue shark that they managed to capture was entangled with a plastic ring around its head, which had started to cut into the shark. After capturing the shark, they were able to release it from the plastic ring and return it back to the ocean. And they had a good discussion about the threats some of these animals face from plastic pollution. I have got in contact with Aramel Jung, one of the scientists who they were collaborating with on this section of the expedition. And hopefully I'll be able to get this sighting shared on the Shark and Ray Entanglement Network, which is a project that I founded a couple of years ago. So fingers crossed she gets back to me. And then the second thing that I quite liked was that across the episodes, you can see that the collaboration over multiple countries and lots of local scientists was really good. In total, I think there were about 60 different scientists from Spain, France, and Ireland, and then others from all over the world that were involved, all doing various different projects on the sharks, from tagging to environmental DNA to microbial analysis, all sorts. And actually seeing this in action is a good thing. I think that more scientists from different parts of the world should be working together to try and combine ideas and hypotheses. It can only be good for science and the sharks when multiple scientists from different parts of the world all work together. So yeah, I like that I could actually see that happening within the series. And that's the thing. If these groups of scientists from these three countries and other parts of the world continue to work together, at some point in time, they might actually get the data about the white sharks that they need 
regardless as to whether Osearch is there at the time or not. If they can get some data, as minimal as that might be, it would be some great information about white sharks in this part of the world. Because the more information we have, the better we're able to understand how these animals might be behaving and using our waters. So Osearch didn't quite find what they were looking for, and honestly, I can't say I'm that surprised, but it will be interesting to see when or if they decide to come back again. If they did come back, one of the best places that I think they could go is shown to you in this video right here. In it, I discuss where all those Mediterranean white sharks might be hiding and tell you exactly where I think your best chance of seeing them is. So make sure you check it out here.